the Queen House. My W and I were married for 15 years and have three kids, oldest and youngest are boys a girl in the middle. It's been almost three months since she dropped the bomb on me. It was after a minor argument she asked me to call back I didn't for a couple of days then she told me it was over. She wanted the six-month separation then D.I. was obviously devastated and had trouble sleeping and eating for the first few weeks. I've lost about 25 pounds. I guess there's one upside to this disaster. At times I thought there may be a glimmer of hope but that came crashing down last night. We had a good conversation the day before and I really thought all my efforts to save the marriage were finally paying off then I asked her the next day, big mistake, if she would give me three months to show I am changed and care very much for her. Then she said that she was just trying to be nice when not discussing her decision to D. She also keeps telling me that she doesn't want to hurt me. Really, I already feel my heart has endured a thousand cuts and is on life support. From the beginning we have not lived in the same house. I slept there a couple of nights which was hard. I should have seen it coming when she first moved to another state where she first told me she wanted to get her real estate license and then told me she found work there as a rental agent. She was already making moves to get away from me. She did ask me to telecommute back then so there was hope. I was just too blind to realize she was already considering D. Back to last night. So I tell her that I'm already hurting and so she tells me this is the way she has been feeling for 15 years of our marriage. She blames me for everything. I'll admit I was not perfect and that hurt her bad emotionally but she brought issues with her from having a neglectful mom. We had a lot of disagreements about parenting, things she said to me but I did not think it was that bad. I was always faithful just lacking in the compassion department as times. I know what brought her to this decision but there could have been several ways it could have played out. She could have agreed to counseling at least for the sake of our three children, or agreed that separation was to reassess our marriage and see if we could save it. She has told me a couple of times that she made the decision final when I asked her whereabouts because at time, she was traveling back to our home state to see friends I have suspected that she was having an E and this all happened a couple days after New Year's. That's when she started crying and told me she had to get the divorce. Since then, though at times she would just say she was confused and she needed space. About three weeks ago, sorry jumping everywhere with this story, I confronted her about a Facebook message, didn't tell her how I knew, where she said she met someone, he is 16 older than her who changed her way of thinking and has three boys, his first marriage didn't work, and considers fatherhood a privilege. What kind of garbage is that? Anyway, I digress. So, she told me we are just friends that right now she is just confused. The next night she pestered me all night until she started crying, my weakness, so I told her I came across it on her laptop she had left Facebook open. She didn't think I wouldn't check. After that she has totally closed up completely. She always hides her phone which is on her parents' account. So, God knows who she's talking to. I still don't know whether to believe her about anything she says. I definitely have been honest with her through this process, but she has definitely not been with me. She is fine with that, ouch. I feel like a doormat right now, not intentional at all. I was trying to show here that I love her very much and her heart is safe with me. I've been trying to do that but last night was a real eye-opener and hurt me very much. I know they say not to initiate conversation about the relationship status, but how do I know how to act with her if I don't know where she is? If she has move on with OM then I need to move on, like separate bank accounts, getting D papers, making arrangements about the kids etc. So now I am once again very hurt after having my hopes up earlier yesterday. I feel like I need to move on but I can't. How does one just easily throw away 15 years of marriage with giving it one more effort? At least for the children's sake. That's what hurts me the most. I know we could work on this marriage if she were willing to try but she made it clear last night she's not interested. She just keeps telling me all the things I did wrong that hurt her. I show her change. She says she sees it but is just waiting until separation is over so she can file for D. I definitely am being taken on an emotional roller coaster by W. Last night she asked me to go out to dinner with the kids. She mostly did not talk especially about herself. That's her thing now not to share about herself if I ask as if she is violating some rule. Then she shows me a photo on her phone supposedly of, who I suspect is OM, OM's girlfriend. She asked me on the way home if I felt better knowing that. I told her yeah, a little. First because my heart is still hurting over S but second, I don't know whether to believe her, even if I take her word for it. She still told me in no uncertain terms she's done and doesn't know if she can get past emotional pain of our marriage. Even though she said that she also has said other things about being confused but that was a couple of weeks ago so who knows. I still don't know what to do about Valentine's. I'm thinking of sending flowers, not roses, with a short message but not stating who they are from. Any ideas what to do or not do here? My head is so clouded right now. She sends me a lot of mixed signals. I read somewhere that WASIU is their number two option right now if their single life does not work out. I mean shouldn't I show some concern and hopes of reconciliation? I'm fine with ditching the flowers but there's got to be some effort if there is any chance at reconciliation. I know it takes two to make it work. I am hoping my efforts will show her. This morning she sent me a text thanking me when I drove around the house her and our kids are staying at to check out a loud blast noise outside last night. 
She had called me about it last night. She asked if I heard it. I heard it too but turned out to be nothing, or firework who knows. I am staying at my in-law's vacation home. Uh, when visiting our kids since my job is in home state, she moved from last summer to get a career after being an at-home wife. Now I think it was to get away from me. So, am I misinterpreting her text messages to me, inviting me to dinner? Is that to displace guilt about what she is doing is wrong? Who knows? I think she feels some guilt about the separation and plan to D. You are all right about her treating me when she sees me like I'm a loser in her book. She also keeps her coat on and hides her phone checking it constantly for messages and Facebook. Maybe one day she'll see that grass is not so greener on the other side. Like you say I need to begin focusing on me and not basing my happiness on her. I just got to get there. It's just so hard when you spent 15 years of your life with this person. Plan to clarify about my wife's situation. She elected to take her re-exam last summer in another state. She told me she was going to pass there in at home state. She passed her exam got a job offer and never looked back. She now tells me that she was trying to get away because I was stressing her out. Wow, she could have told me that before so we could work on the relationship. Thank you everyone for helping me through this very difficult time. This past week she has stopped contacting me. I am the only one initiating contact at this time. I asked her if there was something wrong that I did but she said no. I don't believe it of course. The only thing I can think of is I took a phone call from my brother when I was with her, left the room. She asked I eventually told her it was my brother. I've asked her if it was a big deal, she says no. But ever since then again, no contact. This morning she did not even take my phone call. So, I got to find a way to cope without her. It is so hard right now. I'm so busy I don't have time to go out and hang out with friends. So, I'm dealing mostly on my own. It is so difficult. I do talk with a couple good friends about what to do but I feel like I'm bugging them too much with bad news and asking advice. They say they don't mind so they are really good friends definitely. So, what do I do now since she's made it very clear she does not want to communicate in any way? I found out a few things yesterday. Long story short I knew W was up to something when she began asking my whereabouts Friday night. She told me the kids were staying at her aunt and uncle so they could travel with them to a family celebration of her uncle's dead mom birthday celebration they do each year. She states she has to work, and sounds fishy right, so I drive down in my parents' car for a little pie work yesterday, said it, to see if I could finally confirm my suspicions of OM she calls me again on Saturday to confirm if I would be coming down Sunday morning as agreed. Of course, little does she know I'm a block away. So later that afternoon what stinks is I lost sight of her when trying to back off. So even though I don't have solid evidence, I have a mountain of circumstantial evidence. First asking me my whereabouts, why? Keep in mind we live in two different states. From time to time though I telecommute to help with getting kids off the bus, cooking etc. So, this morning I asked my son about why we could not make the family function. He says that she told everyone, including an uncle, that she had to work. Bold face lies. I know for a fact because that's where I lost her. She was there, I drove off for about an hour, came back gone. Just to make sure she had not gone back to the home I am paying for I was there early in the morning. So, it could only mean one thing OM and PA. So as if my heart is not hurting and churning from all this drama. This morning I found on her Facebook, already logged in. So sloppy, she went to court to file her divorce papers on Friday. What? We still have three months of separation. You couldn't wait. Here is what I'm thinking. This was to clear her conscience about spending the night with OM on Saturday. Plus, I'm sure he encouraged her. Unbelievable. We have not had one argument during the first three months, something she has complained about to her FB friends. I've done nothing but help and serve W and family as much as possible. Cooking meals, fixing things around the house, traveling to other state when kids were sick, letting her drive my car, said her leg hurt W stick on her CRV, cleaning the house, washing dishes. Did her OM do any of this? Nope absolutely not. This is what I get for being nice trying to show her I changed for good. OM is divorced with three boys and I'm pretty sure he had an E with a married woman. But feels special being number 20. Who knows, really, I'm so hurt, disgusted and angry. I asked at the beginning of the separation for her to give us time. Did she even bother to listen? Nope she really believes the grass is greener on the other side. So, I am doing the 180 beginning today. I'm not sure if I will get served with D papers since there is a mandatory 6 month separation. I just need to start preparing and protecting myself as much as possible. I really want full custody of the kids. I just don't know how to go about building my case. I'm sure confirming the affair would be helpful. I need to get the GPS tracker installed. Does infidelity during separation help my case for full custody? Unfortunately, I don't believe or have any real evidence prior to our separation. Also, I have a few other irresponsible things she has done I could include but I just need advice at this point on how to build my case. I got three months to build a strong case for custody. I'm also still dealing with the emotional costs W ending a 15-year relationship, having OM in about a month. I'm so sick. What betrayal. I may have been emotionally hurtful at times. I'll admit I'm not the perfect man but we had good times too. Those don't count in her book. 
Plus, she is not completely innocent. It's not like we did not fight over nothing. I just don't see how breaking up our family is good for the kids. Study and study have shown it is not good for children despite all the BS her GF are telling her. How could she such a cold-hearted uncaring thing? Oh well I just need to start preparing my case and seek counsel quick. As painful as it is, I need to take purposeful steps to protect myself and my children as much as possible. Tomorrow I need to take a day from work to get the ball rolling with opening a separate bank account, talking to an attorney, finding out what else I need to do at this point. We definitely need the 180 now. To realize this is not going to be a cakewalk. She still has it in her head it's going to be easy and amicable. I get sick to my stomach every time I think about her, said a knight, lying to her own family so they can watch the kids. The person I married is gone, replaced by someone who is dishonest and morally bankrupt. How could I ever accept that person back into my life again? Divorce stinks for sure. I am definitely guilty of making S real comfortable for her. I'm not the man in her life by her choice. I don't have to continue to finance her interstate trip so she can visit her OM, her shopping sprees, buying expensive gifts for the kids. I think this is to displace guilt. No more. So, I finally opened up a new bank account pulled some of the funds out. She has not texted or called in the last day and a half. So, I suppose she is having too much fun to know her funds are running low quickly. And to believe I almost did our taxes, I would have the majority of the refund, as joint filing to deposit in the joint account. I'm so glad I did not. This upcoming weekend should be interesting. I'm expecting drama from STBX. She wants me to watch our three children while she spends time this weekend with her OM, I suspect. She asked me to meet her halfway between states so she could drop them off with me. She says it's because her parents will be on their vacation home this weekend so I can't stay there. I don't 100% believe her. I responded with well why don't you stay with them? I'll stay at the house we are renting, the one I help to pay the bills. She said she needs her space and privacy. That I go through her things. She wants to dictate if I can stay at our house. The house I help to pay for. Really? What planet is she one? So, it looks like there will be no way to avoid confrontation this go-round. I will try to stay as calm as possible and firmly negotiate. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Don't I have a right to be in the house spending time with my three children? I really think I'm beyond the point of winning her back. We had dated and waited over two years to get married. How can STBX develop a real relationship in less than two months to the point she is okay with a PA? She knows hardly anything about this person. We were married for 15 years. I think it's highly unlikely it will last. It could last forever who knows. Nothing to me justifies an affair during separation. I don't understand how someone can't wait until at least the divorce is over before beginning another relationship. I got to move on and try as hard as I can to protect myself at this point. The pain is still very great. It has me thinking of doing unreasonable things to escape the pain. Like moving very far away. I know it's the pain talking. So, what other things besides separate accounts do I need to do? My next step is to let her know through my actions she is not in charge. Respect her space. Not a chance. She can leave the house if she doesn't like it. Take all the stuff she needs to hide with her. I have plans to uncover what she is doing using GPS which should arrive shortly. I want to expose her definitely to family and friends. She thinks she is entitled to harming our family this way. Let's see what everyone else thinks about her after that. Plus, if she thought what she was doing was right, why hide it in the first place? I got to get to 50,000 feet. I'm still not there yet. Last Saturday evening after W indicated she was having women issues. I asked her if she wanted to watch a movie together or TV since the evening before we watched part of a movie together after we put the kids to bed. She said no and that if I wanted to do something with the kids that would be fine. I told her I wanted to talk to her in person. She has the bedroom door locked. She told me she would talk to me in a few minutes, which means could be minutes, could be an hour. I was upset with her so I told her I was going to the other house, I sleep it, to wash clothes and I would be back. So, I came back and found out she had could some dinner and had come out of the room. But as soon as she saw me, she disappeared back in the room. She said she was not feeling well and referred to the women issues she had mentioned on Friday. So, I got the kids ready for bed and lingered for a little while longer in the living room. That's when I heard W ask the kids if I left which they thought I had left. That's when W asked my D for her computer back. Little did she know that I had remote access. That night I saw her researching not only yeast infection, but also STD. I kind of suspected there was more to what she was saying. So, Sunday morning around 9.40 a.m. I texted her to ask if the kids were dressed and if I could take the kids to church. She replied in a text, no I'm sorry. I think I may need to go to the ER. So, I told her I would be over shortly. I'll never forget what happened when I arrived that morning. The first thing I said was, W, what have you gotten yourself into? She finally confessed what I had suspected that last month or so. She told me she had been sleeping with OM and she thought she had an STD. She kept saying I messed up. You darn right you did. She broke down crying and saying she wished she could take it all back. She wished she had never asked for separation. I don't know why but at that moment I felt somewhat sorry for her. 
She was always very impulsive not thinking things through which was an issue in our marriage. So here she is with nobody I mean nobody but me to help her. Here is the kicker she first slept with this dirtbag a week after separation. She slept over his house three days after s so, Sunday I stayed with her that day because of feeling sorry for her. She was paralyzed by what she pretty sure she had so I did everything for the kids that day. That evening she kept trying to hug me and kept saying sorry. I was of course disgusted but numb because I kind of thought she was having an EA, PA. So that night she kept calling me every time I would go in another room. I felt sorry for her because she had nobody. Plus, she is still the mother of my children. Plus 15 years of him so, I stayed that night in the same room on the floor. I was really worried because she kept talking about suicide. That she couldn't live with herself. I kept telling her the kids still need her to be their mom. Nobody could replace their mom. That night I went from sleeping in the same room on the floor, then to the couch, because I was disgusted and the floor was uncomfortable. I kept telling her she needed to go to the ER but she refused. She didn't want to face the truth or consequences of what she had done. On Monday, I got the kids off to school. When I came back, she was on her cell. I don't know how but I knew right away if OM was. I was so enraged I ran over and started wrestling with her over the phone. She kept saying I was talking to him to find out what he had. I told her I didn't care, no more contact or I was leaving her to take care of herself or ask him to take care of her. That is when she told me he broke it off with her back in February. She said, he doesn't want me. No really, after he got what he wanted what did you think was going to happen? How naive can you be? I was so angry I told her she better never contact him again or I was not going to help her at all. Still pisses me off. So yesterday, I finally talked her into going to the ER. Some may say I am an idiot for even considering helping her but I should mention that she was constantly crying uncontrollably. She really has nobody right now she would tell. At the hospital I felt like the attending hospital staff was looking at me funny. W told me that one of the nurses said he a really good husband to do this for you I did get a little satisfaction out of that. Her knowing to throw away a good thing she had thinking the grass was greener on the other side. So later that evening after taking care of the kids I drove back to the ER to pick W up. What do you know as I am walking up to her, she is on the phone again with OM again. I was ready to let her have it. However, she told me the nurse made her call him. I guess by law they need to talk to the people they slept with even if they gave it to you. Yuck, barf. I told her that better be the last time she contacts him. I told her I want to check her phone, email everything whenever I want to at any time. I am not going to help get her through this if she has any more contact with OM she has said she would be willing to let me check her phone, email etc. So here I am today, W, should I start saying STBX, has gone to work. I am concerned because she has stopped eating much since Saturday. I think she has had maybe 500 calories in the past 3 days. She is 5 inches and now weighs 114 pounds. She said she has no appetite. She told me her BP was really low at the hospital. Not sure if she is going to make it through today. She has mentioned turning to God. She still cries but not as much and we have talked about what happened because for the last four months I have been clearly in the dark. I was just curious about what was happening during that time. This morning she did mention she got nothing out of it. There's some satisfaction in some strange way knowing I was much better than that. I don't know my rating but it's up there. So, for now I am signing off but will be checking more frequently for now. Thank you all for your support and help in getting me through. I am feeling much stronger and confident in loving myself. I still have my moments. Regarding bedroom time, we were perfect for each other in that regard. That was the one part of our marriage that was actually great. It was also very frequent at least three to four times a week. She told me the other day she got nothing out of the OM no satisfaction. She says she doesn't even know why she kept on with it even. She mentioned she thought I wouldn't take her back if she admitted what she had done. I mostly feel sorry for her right now. She was never really able to make good judgment calls in her life. Despite everything I still see her as the mother of my children. How the heck can I trust that she won't have another pa? I am here for her right now because I feel sorry for her and the future my children would have to face. She has barely eaten anything the last four days, maybe 500 calories total. Part of me is angry, disgusted at what she has done to me, to this family. You are right I should show no mercy. She deserves everything she is experiencing right now. She made choices she is going to have to live with for the rest of her life. If we did not have three children in this marriage, I definitely would have left her to her own destruction. They sound harsh but they are the main reason right now that's keeping me going. I look at them and my heart breaks for what they will have to go through. WS has put my back against the wall this time. Over the last couple of weeks, she has gone back and forth about working things out. Never any real commitment. Most times stating, she has too many issues to work through. Most of the time I feel like I'm trying to convince her. Not to mention she had not pee during separation. I still think she is in the fog. So today she has my back against the wall. Her text is as follows STBX, will need help with deposit and first month for new place. We'll have to give money to sign lease and another money when I get the keys on June 1st. We have a joint account that I have been putting some money into from time to time. What I want to know is what the heck is she spending her money on. 
Also, she has made it clear she does not want my name on the lease. I didn't even have a say so in picking out the place. Now she wants my money to help her with the security deposit. We have three children together so I'm torn. You wouldn't believe the phone conversation we had yesterday. She told me she needed help and first month rent on a townhouse she picked out and that I was not welcome to stay there overnight ever. Let me see if I get this straight, I am not welcome however she wants me to pay for getting her moved into this place she picked out and along with our children. I wonder if I did that would she help me financially. I have seen the lease and it states only for her to occupy the place. Can you hear the nail going into the coffin? When we talked yesterday evening, she said she had not fully dismissed reconciling our marriage. Huh. I went to the Poe to pick up the D papers this morning that I was avoiding picking up. Now I see the leases specifically designates for only WS and our three children. I'm sure her dad had a hand in this though since he is co-signing. He is dead set on getting the D to go through. He's still married what a shame to give your daughter such lousy advice. How about no you should work on your marriage. I just got to get rid of that nasty feeling in the pit of my stomach. How does someone flush a 15 year marriage with three children down the drain so easily? She can discuss that she is considering reconciling but if there is no action, no effort on her part what am I to believe but what I see her doing? I just need strength to carry on right now. So, I get a text today from WS that she wants to meet for lunch. On the drive over to get something to eat she says my dad has cut me off. He will not pay for any more repairs to my car. My mom is mad that he gave me money for yesterday's repairs, 600 bucks plus. I need your help. I have no money. So, we have lunch with a side of small talk. On the drive back I say, you can see how I am conflicted with giving you money given everything that is going on right now. Her response well I need the car to drive your kids around. Don't you want them to be safe? Why do I feel like my back is being put against the wall? So, I talk to my dad about everything and he feels that we should sit down and discuss where all the money is going. Because I have been putting money in a joint account and she has her own account. I have no clue how she spends her money. She just called me and asked me to come pick her up to get her car. So, the saga continues. She did lay the guilt trip on me by throwing and don't you want your kids to feel safe. So yesterday after picking her up from work she tells me she used the joint account for the basic auto repairs to her parking brake which was 67 bucks. I don't like the fact that she took the liberty but I was going to tell her that amount was fine anyway. So, I'm not concerned with that. The other repairs that are needed are in the hundreds. To me that's on her to figure out how to pay for it. She needs to take responsibility for her actions. I am not going to pay her to leave me. We did sit down and go over the spending both in the joint account and her account. Although I have to take her word for it about her spending. It did in the end add up. Part of it was her spending money to file D papers. And that money could have been used for her auto repairs. Again, not my problem she needs to figure that part out. I did tell her that another option was to reunite her family. Maybe I should not have suggested it but she wouldn't be in this mess if she hadn't decided to S and then sleep with OM. The other thing she has not factored in yet is that things could get worse for her. Why? Well, I have not exposed her yet to her family. If they knew what she was doing it would be a crap storm to say the least for her. Her mom would probably disown her, given his race and age 49, she's 33, her dad would be very angry. So, she doesn't know the fine line she is walking with me. I've been more than cordial, no more nice guy is in order soon. I am waiting this week to see how she plans this weekend with me seeing the kids. Or if the wind changes. I discovered a few weeks ago that just about every time I had the kids with me, she was sleeping over OM's house. Get this, OM is two hours away from her and she was driving to his house. Last week, WS suggested I pick them up again, among other options last weekend but finally settled on me visiting on Sunday and getting the kids off the bus yesterday. I am driving two to three hours, in another state to, to see the kids. I guess I should add WS has not seen OM since beginning of April. I do know she is still sending emails to him. WS sends me texts daily about random stuff, asks me how I am doing. This morning it was about Jason Collins, the basketball player coming out. Is this just to play with my mind? To see if I am still waiting for her to come back? That plan B is still available. I don't know but I am getting to the point where I don't want to be someone's plan B. Maybe she comes around months or years from now but by then it will be too late. This was supposed to be for WS the greener grass on the other side. While to say the least it blew up in her face. I'm clueless as to why she still contacts him. Maybe she feels she's stuck with him. Who knows, I will expose her soon. I'm just a little hesitant to do it right now. But I'm pretty sure it will happen sometime this week. I have undeniable proof. Much like dropping a nuke the fallout is going to last a while. I tend to believe she is stuck in the fog not willing to admit to herself she messed up royally. I was with her for almost two weeks in the middle of March when she cried, told me she loved me, admitted how selfish she had been, that she messed up big time. Then once she started to feel a little better back into the fog she went as if those two weeks I helped her meant nothing. The way I see it is if you realize you made bad choices in life no need to keep repeating them. I have a feeling this week will be momentous in some form or fashion. I'm not going to be anybody's plan B operation scorched earth is underway. I'll let you know how it turns out.
This morning WS sends me the following in response to your earlier test you'll have to forgive me but it feels like a slap in the face for you to offer to send me verses when you don't care enough to make sure the kids and I have a safe vehicle to ride in, or the I'm nice enough to try to split rent and utilities and ask you to pay for very little else even though you take home for more than I do. But when it comes to our tax refund you left me money when you told me you left money which, but whatever would have been enough to fix my car and make it safe to be on the road. It's sad when my coworker is nice enough to offer to go without to lend me the money but the person who supposedly cares about me and his kids can't be bothered. First of all, I have been putting money in a joint account each month and yes, I left a few hundred dollars and from the tax refund. I told her before and in a text back that that the money used to file the papers could have been used to repair the car. I offered other options among them reuniting our family. I have no problems helping in a marriage but this is very different. Keep in mind she puts nothing in the joint account so I have to take her word for it as to where all the money is going in her account. I gave her about 18% of the tax refund which is a couple hundred more than she would have received had she filed separately. She is telling me that since we were married last year, she should get half of the tax refund. Well for one quarter of that year she was sleeping with OM so now is that an admission of adultery. Almost half a year later, after we walked out of our hearing my ex W sat down and talked to me. She told me she wanted us to work things out without the courts involved concerning custody, alimony, and child support. My thoughts that afternoon was is she trying to placate her parents, since they didn't like me, smiling in my face, spent so much time together, so fake, please her OM or is it that she does not want to share our three kids? You know being alone to deal with destroying our family and marriage, 15 years. So, she said needed things to just cool off a little. Well since she was always lying to me throughout the separation about seeing this OM, I of course had to verify what was really going on here. I checked email which she does not know I can see which said pretty much everything. OM commented I'm sending you a little angel, a little angel is with you right now, or some version of BS like that. So, I concluded that in fact she likes having control over the kids being with her and having a say so. I've kept quiet and played along which has been extremely difficult. I live in another state almost 3 hours away. So, when I would visit and stay usually from Saturday through Tuesday, telecommute, it was at her place, rental. I told her a number of times that it was difficult to stay there given the fact that we divorced. She has hushed me a couple of times when I said that mentioning she did not want the kids to hear. A little shame maybe. She has even gone as far as to say she hasn't figured things out yet. Well isn't it too damns late for that? Who knows? She would tell me constantly whenever I asked that there was nothing between OM and her anymore that he doesn't want me which of course was a lie. So, can you see how awkward that gets when you are sleeping on the couch and plus the kids see you getting disrespected at time? Like when I watched them while she went on a business trip to VA then comes home complaining and arguing how the kids are not in bed and the place not being immaculate. What? So I decided very quickly after a couple of weeks of that to get my own place, August 15, in the state to my kids live in just in case she decided to file for custody. I have been staying at my parents' place in Pa when I'm away from the kids. She does not know that I did this yet. Fast forward to about three weeks ago she decides it was not a good time for me to come down. She says cause her parents would be down so it would be awkward. Are you kidding like this arrangement is not crazy enough. So, she calls me last week to say can you come down for the weekend, of course I love spending time with my kids. That she was going back to our home state to see her friends and she does not have any friends in state she's living in. She moved to summer 2018 during her covert mission to test the waters living single unbeknownst to me, no I'm not clueless. She told me she wanted to pass her re-exam that's all then come back to pass in our home state, then surprise found a new job. I said no but she convinced me we needed the money and I could find something there, soon found there were no jobs in my field. Uh, I should mention that prior to this she has had the kids with her the whole time and has never introduced OM to them as her boyfriend. Barf. So immediately I'm like well I know where you're going. On set him, I see her at our D9 soccer practice before she gets ready to leave for mommy time and I know I should not but I confronted her and said look I know you going to OM's house. She swears up and down she's not and wanted to just see her friends. I concede what the hell am I talking about, anyway we got the D. She still is like look I'm just going to see friends. This past Tuesday once again finds out it's a lie. So, I now in no way have any desire to R I made that decision that morning. So here is where I'm at with this line of thinking. I need to prepare to get custody at least 50-50 if I can get it. I know the fallout will be she asks for alimony and child support that's just the way it is and I completely understand that. Here's the thing her parents have no idea she has been involved. A 49-year-old black guy, former football coach to my oldest team. Okay I said a mouth full. The reason I say all this is that her parents did not approve of us getting married partly because I am mixed and she's white. So, you can only imagine how ballistic they will go if they were to find out. I in no way want her back. The reason why I would even bother letting them know is twofold, one being I don't want this OM slipping in gradually after a few years, if I can help it, and playing daddy to my three kids who I love dearly after what this piece of crap did to our family. 
Two, does she really expect to continue to live in fantasy land forever with her secret life of being with a bad boy? I just don't know if these are really good reasons to expose her especially since we are already divorced. I appreciate all the advice I can get on this one since I've struggled with it and held off for this long. Knowing there could be a nasty fallout but I don't think this piece of crap should get away with no consequences. Don't get me wrong she is equally at fault for ruining the marriage and our family. BS 36, XW 34. I should add that I'm glad this part of my life is over with and I'm in the process of healing and moving on hoping to meet a woman who won't treat me the way I've been treated for the last 10 months. I had my faults nothing physical just saying things in the heat of disagreements that did not show love but I was willing and showed that I've made changes however for almost half of the separation I did not have a clue of the EA, PA. The evidence I have is irrefutable. I just keep thinking though she is still the mother of my children. Plus, we will have to work together for at least 12 years considering our youngest is 7. My thoughts exactly what the hell, apparently though we don't have much say so concerning child support. It's determined by a state-mandated formula. However, the alimony is strictly voluntary, so it can be declined. I may have some leverage there. We are still trying to work out a schedule on our own without the court's involvement. It's been a bumpy road so far. I spoke to my ex today about adhering to the holiday schedule from the state and that the kids should stay at my place instead of me staying at her place, very uncomfortable. She agreed we should get a schedule set up. Right now, I'm feeling a little lonely but I know I don't want to jump into anything, still very emotional. Although I am considering getting my toes wet in the dating pool. It does look a little scary out there. From what I've been reading on, dating rules have dramatically changed since I last dated 18 years ago. Wow, I am missing having a marriage, not the ex, and family life. There are moments a flash of a past memory hits me of things we did as a family. I sure hope things get better as time passes. My comment, maybe they never had a good relationship. I got a lighter video coming in the afternoon, coming soon.